when we look at error intervals, we are looking at a number that has already been rounded, and we are looking at what the number could have been before it was rounded. Here's an example. A number x is rounded to one decimal place. The result is 5.6. Write the error interval for x. So if we rounded our number to 5.6, that means it must have been closest to 5.6 to one decimal place. So if we look at halfway in between 5.5 and 5.6, which is 5.55, and halfway in between 5.6 and 5.7, which is 5.65, these become the bounds of what our number could have been. So our number must be between 5.55 and 5.65. And we write our error interval as an inequality. So we are going to say that x is bigger than 5.55 and less than 5.65. But remember, if we had 5.55, we would round up to 5.6. So we're going to say it can equal, it's bigger or equal to 5.55 and it's less than 5.65. So this is our answer. This is our error interval. So it's in between 5.55 and 5.65, but it can equal 5.55. Here's another example. A number x is rounded to one decimal place, and this time we have 1.9. So what's the error interval for x? So to one decimal place, we've got 1.9. The one up would have been 2.0 and the one back would have been 1.8. So we go halfway in between 1.8 and 1.9, so 1.85, and halfway between 1.9 and 2.0, 1.95. So to round to 1.9, to one decimal place, it must have been between 1.85 and 1.95. Let's write it as an inequality. So we're going to say x is bigger or equal to 1.85. And it's less than 1.95. So it's in between 1.85 and 1.95. It can equal 1.85, but it can't equal 1.95. And another example, this time a number y is rounded to two decimal places. We've got 5.92, and again we're writing the error interval. So if we've got 5.92, the one up is 5.93, the one back is 5.91. So what could our number have been? It could have been anything between the two halfway points. So we've got 5.915 and 5.925. So our number is bigger or equal to 5.915 and less than 5.925. OK, two for you to try. So give these a go. A number x is rounded to one decimal place. The result is 6.7. Write the error interval. So it's 6.7. We're in one decimal place, so the one up is 6.8. The one back is 6.6. .6. So our number could have been anything between these halfway points, which is 6.65 and 6.75. So our number's in between 6.65 and 6.75. So it's x, and we're going to say it can equal 6.65, but it cannot equal 6.75. If it was 6.75, we'd round it up 
to 6.8. And the next one, we've got a number rounded to two decimal places. So it's been rounded to 2.48. The one up is 2.49. The one back is 2.49. The one back is 2.47. So our number could be anything in between the two halfway points, which are 2.475 and 2.485. So let's write our error interval. It's bigger or equal to 2.475 and it's less than 2.485. Another example, this time we've got a number x rounded to one significant figure. The result is 500, and we're going to write the error interval for x. So it's been rounded to 500 to one significant figure. So to one significant figure, the one up is 600, and the one back is 400. And our number could have been anything in between the two halfway points. So we've got 450 and 550. And again, we're going to say it can equal 450. That would round up to 500. But it cannot equal 550. So it's bigger or equal to 450 and less than 550. And the second example, this time it's been rounded to two significant figures, and we've got 35. So it's been rounded to 35. So that means it must have been between the two halfway points. So between 34.5 and 35.5. And we're going to say it could have equaled 34.5. But it cannot equal 35.5. Okay, two for you to try. So give these a go. The first one says a number has been rounded to one significant figure. And it is 2,000. So to one significant figure, 2,000. So the next one up, if we're going in one significant figure, would be 3,000. And the one back is 1,000. And our number must be between the two halfway points. So that's 1,500 and 2,500. So again, we're using inequality signs to write the interval. So we're going to say it's bigger or equal to 1,500. We would round 1,500 to 2,000, but we wouldn't round 2,500, so we use a less than sign. We can go all the way up to it, all the way up to this point, but if we actually reach that point, we would round it to 3,000. And the second one, it's been rounded to two significant figures, so we've got 7.2. The next one up is 7.3. The one back is 7.1. So to round to 7.2, it must be in between the two halfway points, which is 7.15 and 7.25. So the error interval is x again. It's bigger or equal to 7.15. And it's less than 7.25. In this example, a number x is truncated to one decimal place. That means it's just been cut off after one decimal place, regardless of what the numbers were after it. So if it's 5.7, it could have been 5.74 or 5.76 or 5.7903, or 
or 5.724 or 5.7865. It doesn't matter what came after the 5.7. It's just been cut off there. So if it's been truncated, that means after one decimal place, they've just ignored what came next and said the first decimal place is seven. I'm not rounding it. I'm just going to cut it off there and that's it. So what's the error interval for X? So it is between 5.7 and 5.8. So it's anything starting at 5.7 and including 5.7 all the way up to 5.8. So it could be 5.7999999 all the way up to 5.8, but not including 5.8 because that would truncate to 5.8. So that is our answer. A number n for the second question is truncated to two significant figures. The result is 350. Write the error interval for n. So two significant figures. So one, two, the hundreds and the tens. So anything after that has been cut off. So it could have been 359, it could have been 352.6, we don't know. So to two significant figures, the next one up would be 360. So it's anything in between 350 and 360. And we're going to say it could have equaled 350. It could have been exactly 350, but it couldn't have been 360 because that would have truncated to 360. So it could have been 359.9 or 359.99, but it can't be 360. So this is our error interval. Okay, two for you to try, so give these a go. A number x is truncated to two decimal places, and the result is 2.85. So it's 2.85. The next one up is 2.86. So to truncate to 2.85, it must be in this range. So it can equal 2.85, but it can't equal 2.86. The second one, a number x is truncated to one significant figure. The result is 3,000. The next one up would be 4,000. And we're going to say it's anything in the range 3,000 to 4,000. So it's between 3,000 and 4,000. It can equal 3,000. But it can't equal 4,000. Okay, let's finish up two questions, pause the video, give it a go, and press play when you're ready for the answers. Question one, a number x is rounded to one decimal place. The answer, the result is 4.6. So the next one up is 4.7. The one back is 4.5. So to round to 4.6, to one decimal place, it must be between the two halfway points, which are 4.55 and 4.65. So x is bigger or equal to 4.55 and less than 4.65. So if it was 4.55, we would round it to 4.6. If it was 4.65, we wouldn't. We'd round it to 4.7. Question two, n is truncated to two significant figures. The result is 8,500. Write the error interval for n. So it's 8,500. The next one up is 8,600 to two significant figures. And because it's been truncated, we're saying it's in the range 8,500 to 8,600. 
So n is bigger or equal to 8,500 and less than 8,600.